Okay, this video is primarily aimed at people who've finished the M1 course now, uh, looking at past paper questions and keep coming across questions where they ask for forces acting on a pulley. Let's go down and have a quick look at example. Uh, this is question seven from October 2021, I think. And uh, where are we? Part C says, can we find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string there. So what I've done is to actually, in effect, just look at the main types of question that they're gonna be and go through them and just give you some things to learn that just mean you can race through these questions. Quite often they're only worth one mark. Uh, for example, with this one here, if we had this scenario set up where you've got um, two masses on either side of a pulley, in the original question, I actually wouldn't have those bits on there. That would be what my question would look like. But if I knew I was going to have um, the resultant force acting on the pulley, then I put these extra forces on here because then it's nice and simple. The R is simply equal to 2T. Don't need to do anything more than that. I say it's only likely to be worth one mark. You'll have worked out tension from the uh, earlier part of any question and they're just checking have you done this work? Have you seen this before? So yes, we have. Here we go. There's one example if we've just got that. Okay, it could be slightly more complicated in that we could have this scenario all set up. And again, if they weren't asking me for the resultant force on the pulley, my diagram would actually look like that. I wouldn't have the R in there, I wouldn't have anything else like that. But when it gets to the bit where they then say, can you tell us what the resultant force acting on the pulley is? I'm not going into any detail over this, but basically this T here, if I want it to act in that direction, and this T here, if I also want it to act in that direction, we can just learn by rote that R is going to be equal to 2T, and then because this angle's 45 degrees here, 2T cos 45, so. Just learn it, just have it there. If they give us one of these questions, one mark maybe, it can be a little more complicated than have some more um, information trying to work out the angles. But yeah, that's two of the cases that I can think of. And this pretty much is the third case where we have this situation here. And again, I'm not gonna spend any time doing this at all. We don't need to explain where all the work comes from with this one. R is equal to 2T cos theta. So all you've gotta be careful of is that theta here is half of this green angle, okay? So if you know what the angle is there, you've got to divide it by two to work out uh, what theta is gonna be. And then, as I say, nothing to stop you from just using this one here. So as long as you know what theta is, and you can normally work that out given all the information off the diagram, quite likely they'll have given you that angle in there and you'll be able to do some rearranging and whatever. Uh, but those three things then, I've put them all together. There's that question. I've actually put them all together here. One, two, three. Go away and learn them, maybe the night before the exam. It's unlikely to come up, but if it does come up, this is just a way of gaining access to a slightly more complicated question. This number seven from October, 2021, which is very similar to example three, again, we'd be using that one in there. So by all means, go away and look at the video for that one on, on, on the channel. Uh, but that's just a brief, very brief summary of how you might solve forces acting on a pulley by learning those three scenarios for those three diagrams. Okay, hopefully that will make sense to you.